Okay, today I'm going to make a video and show you some of the modifications I made to my manual jib crane. I made a video the other day on this crane and I showed uh, how I lifted logs into the back of my truck and I explained how I built this. And I made two major changes to it that I think are going to make it a lot better. And the first is a change to this lever arm. When I was, if you watched that last video I made, the last log I lifted was uh, 160 pounds, and with the rigging being 20 pounds, that's 180 pounds I lifted, and it lifted it fine, but there was a bow in this, in this 2x4, and if you could see, there's probably, this 2x4 is 3 and a half inches, um, that's a 3 quarter inch hole, so there's probably 2 and a half inches right here of solid wood. And that's going to be the weakest point right over the pin. And as I was lifting that, I saw this 2x4, it was bowing, and I didn't like that. So what I did was I made a, a change to it. And the fix that I, that, I, uh, that I did to this, it actually works in two ways. The first, I took a piece of fur and, and uh, cut it out into this shape, and I epoxied it right to the top of the 2x4 right over the two lifting holes and that will probably be enough alone to actually strengthen this 2x4 right over this because if you think about it when this is under load and this the top of this 2x4 is in tension so the fibers are wanting to pull apart and that's how it would break it would break right at the top there so by adding all this material on top uh, you're you're going to resist that, and it's going to be it's going to be a lot stronger. So that's one way that it helped. And then another way is I went and and installed this eighth inch cable. What I did was I sunk uh, a couple of eye hooks. They're five sixteenths. And what I did was I I just countersunk and I through bolted it right through the right through the two by four. I did it at the forward end and the aft end right here and then I hooked a, a eighth, an eighth inch cable to it and I used these clamps here on both sides I used two on each one and I ran that right over the top of that that uh, two by material and I tightened it with a turnbuckle so I made this this lever arm a lot stronger and I didn't add that much weight to it it's just the weight of the turnbuckle, which this the body of it's aluminum, and then the weight of the cable and the weight of the spacer here. And this is about nine inches from here to here. So what that cable does is you can tension this cable by using this turnbuckle, and and you could actually put a bit. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you could put in a little bit of a dip. You can put some te enough tension on it to form a little dip in this, this lever arm, this 2x4, and it's going to make it a lot stronger. So when I lifted that 160 pound log, I didn't like the way that that was bending. Now with this in here, I'm not going to be worried at all about this lever arm breaking. So and what I did was I have, uh, I tested it, I put, there's a bucket of uh, screws here. That weighs 65 pounds, and this bucket over here weighs 75 pounds full of screws, so that's 140 pounds plus the 20 pounds of rigging, so that's 160. Now that wasn't quite as much as the 180 I had with the log and the rigging before, but I lifted that in the shop here just about 15 minutes ago, and I looked at this um, this lever arm and I have a, uh, a little bit of a reverse curve in it right now with this tension on here and when I lifted that up this this was straight it, it was there's no bow to it at all so I'm real happy with how this this fix came out and you know if this cable sinks into that wood a little bit over time I've got plenty of adjustment room on this turnbuckle to just keep um, putting a little bit of tension on it so that was the first major modification and then the second one was how I shim this thing. When I was lifting logs out of the back of my truck, I had a, a bunch of wood shims, and um, I figured that's what I was going to do is just cut some 
some uh, plywood material so when I get on site I can shim it. But I thought of a better way because actually, and I'll get down here. Actually, when you shim this, you can't just shim the outside edges and leave the, the middle of this plywood with the, with the air space under it because that's where all the weight is coming straight down on that column. So what I did was right now under there, I have a, a one and a half inch block. It's I cut it round and it's, it's right under there. So that's why you can see this gap right here. So really, I want all the weight and I want everything in, this, in the middle of this, this plywood here to be supported. And then what I did was I had these, let me see if I can get the camera in here. I had these little levelers and it went on an old school desk that I had. I have four of them and it's a 3 8 threaded rod with a, a steel and rubber pad on the bottom. And I figured I'd use those as levelers. So what I did was I took, I took that a 3 8 blind nut or T-nut and I drilled through here and I sunk, I sunk this underneath and then I ran the, the leveler through there and what I did for a little handle here is I, I bought uh, four tension pins and I drilled through here with an eighth inch drill and put these in so you could, so you could turn these just by hand. So the procedure is going to be, and I made an extra block here. I have two of these in case the ground is really uneven. So the procedure for leveling this basically is to put one or two blocks under the middle of it. You want to set this down first and then you're going you're gonna to tighten these, these leveler pads until you make, make this level and the column plumb. And I know that those pads uh, on the ground are probably going to sink right in so I made all I, all I have is four, these are seven inch diameter pads that I could use to put under those levelers. So when I get on site, the first thing I do is put either one or two of these down and then try to, you know, and then level this up by putting these pads under the here and just tighten these, tightening those, uh, those elevator screws until I get the, this platform level. So that's how this thing works. This, this column, as I was mentioning the other day in the video, has to be plumb in order to work right. So that's the procedure on how I'm gonna level that in the field. And I think it's gonna work real, real good. So I've got the 80 pound log up here again. And I wanted to show you one more thing on this. I don't know if I was clear the other day when I was telling you about how, uh, how all the forces always come straight down on this column when this is when it's plumb and when the base is leveled. But I just wanted to show you something. Um, I've got I've got a bucket of water here with just the right amount of, of water in it. I already balanced it out. And I want to show you, I'm gonna put it on the other end of here on the on the pull end of it. I'm going to lift this up, get it off the table. And I'm going to move this over. I'll put this here up here like this. There. So So right now I have enough water in there to level this this whole system out. And you can see it stands, it's, it's freestanding. There's a bucket of water with probably around 30 pounds of water in it. And then the log on the other side, the 80 pound log and the 20 pounds of rigging. So, so it just goes to show when, see, because I think some people might be concerned with, with how that column was, was moving around when I was lifting the logs up. But that was me moving that column around. If you do it, you know, carefully, and just lift up on the on the pull. It's always going to be in balance, and that's how this that's how this system works. Because whether whether it's up up like this, we just hit the light, or down like this, it's always got to be. This whole system's always got to be in equilibrium. It's always got to be in balance, and all the forces will be straight down on that column. So I'm real happy with how it came out, and. 
I'm looking forward to going into the field and lifting some logs up with it. Now that I have this, uh, this top member stiffened like this, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to lift 175, maybe 200 pounds max, but I probably wouldn't want to go over that. But that's going to that's gonna include most of the, the wood that I, that I bring to my shop because I cut it to length, 18 to 24 inches. And unless it's a huge round, I'll uh, end up splitting it on site. So I think it's gonna, it's gonna work well for most, probably 90% of the, the bigger stuff that I, that I cut up on site. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be able to just lift it, lift it up and put it in the back of my pickup truck. So I just wanted to start up the camera and show you the, the modifications I made uh, to, the, to, the, to the manual jib crane. All right?